in rise of kingdoms if you bring three skills to max on any given commander it costs 380 legendary commander sculptures but if you want to get that last skill to max at five it's going to cost an additional 310 legendary commander sculptures so to expertise a commander from five 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 one it costs almost as much as getting another entire commander to five 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 one and there are some commanders in rise of kingdoms that are so good with only three skills maxed that a lot of times it might not even make that much sense for you to actually expertise them because rise of kingdoms is a game of opportunity cost so that's what we're going to talk about today now the other day i made a video talking about the best five 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 one commanders in rise of kingdoms and in that video i talked a lot about how much value you get out of only two skills and in this video we're going to focus on what you're actually leaving on the table as a five 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 one commander so that way you guys have an idea as to why it might make sense to save 310 legendary commander sculptures but first what's going on guys cheers now real quick if anything looks or sounds different it's because I'm obviously in a different room here and when I moved my computer something about the camera broke in Streamlabs OBS so now I switched completely over to regular OBS because I spent like an hour troubleshooting the problem and I had to rebuild this entire scene that you're looking at here so hopefully the audio and video quality is okay but with that being said let's just jump right into this and we're going to start with archers okay first we got to talk about Boudicca Prime now this is a commander that I've talked about a lot on this channel and over the past couple of months I've been telling you guys that this fourth skill really doesn't move the needle that much for Boudicca in the open field and neither does her expertise I mean straight up it just doesn't now there's one exception to this and that's if you're going to pair her with Artemisia but I think most players are not going to be doing that most players are probably pairing her with YSG or with Zhuge Liang and if that's what you're doing then really you don't really need this last skill the healing factor is not that crazy and yes you deal a little bit extra damage to infantry so that literally doesn't do anything if you're fighting calves for example and the expertise here is like okay yes it's nice to dispel control effects but you already have the ability to dispel control effects on Zhuge Liang so if you leave your Boudicca at 5551 five, you get a massive amount of value there and really like I don't think there's a good reason to expertise her the only thing that I can think of that might change my mind about this with the expertise here because you do get 10 percent bonus archer damage okay which effectively is normal attack damage right it this doesn't actually affect skill damage if you guys didn't know however in the future if we do get a smite damage archer commander this may change my opinion on whether or not you should expertise Boudicca okay but at this point like that's speculation I think there's a good chance we get smite damage commanders for archers later but we don't really know for sure and we also don't know how long until that happens so for now I would say a 5551 Boudicca is like literally like 95 or 98 percent of the value out of her and you can save 310 sculptures she's definitely one of the best 5551 commanders in the entire game next let's talk about Nebu okay Nebu is a bit of an older commander and yet he still somehow sees a lot of play in the open field a lot of players they love the AoE on Nebu they love the defense they love the March speed and they love the debuff on the fourth skill here and a lot of players say oh he's too squishy he's too old and yet somehow people still use him all the time and I think he's completely fine I think using Nebu right now at the at the end of 2023 makes a lot of sense now the one problem with Nebu is the third skill this skill only works in rally scenarios which obviously in this video we're talking about mainly open field fighting so you don't have the luxury of controlling the skill distribution okay that's the beauty of Boudicca Prime is that the last skill is the one that you don't really care for with Nebu you have to first skill lock the first two skills and then you want to bring them to four and you have to sort of hope that all of your skill ups go into the final skill you shouldn't really be using any skill resets on him I think they should all go towards a commander we'll talk about later in the video but if you can get your hands on a 5515 Nebu I think there is no reason to expertise him I think he's perfectly fine there the extra damage factor on his expertise is fine but it really doesn't move the needle that much I mean if it bumped his AoE up to 2k then I'm all for it that's amazing but it doesn't it actually just deals 
additional damage to only one target that you're hitting the main target so for me like that's not that crazy especially because again this third skill literally doesn't do anything so you would be spending 310 legendaries commander sculptures for a 500 damage factor not worth it to me next we're going to talk about Duke Leong, okay and this is a commander that i also think um is good at 5515 just like nebu except the good part here is that the last the third skill the one that i think has the lowest amount of value out of the four is still a good skill so if you are un unlucky with your skill increases for Duke Leong, like let's say you get a 5533 three, three, great news that's fine he's still really good regardless whereas if you're talking about the nebu and you get a 5533 three, that's not great right that's that's not great and that's one of the amazing things about Zhuge Liang. but the reason that i prefer his third skill to be skipped is because um yes you know there's nice skill damage here but you have to remember that just by unlocking it you're gonna get five percent right you're getting something just by unlocking this which is nice and the fourth skill i just think there's so much value here 10 percent bonus damage as opposed to two is crazy and you're doubling the aoe damage factor okay and it's three targets by the way so i just think there's a lot more value getting the fourth skill to five than the third skill to five but again both of them are super good now the last thing i want to talk about with Juga Liang is that unlike Boudica and unlike Nebu you should eventually come back and expertise him I think he's every like I said every skill on him is good his expertise is also really good so you get just an, an insane amount of value with every single skill up here and if there is going to be you know one Archer commander that you expertise I think Juga Leung is, is probably it he's he's got to be the best value and finally let's talk about Henry okay Henry is very similar in my mind to Nebu and I think a lot of players interchange them I think if they want more uh you know skill damage to one target they go with Henry if they want more AoE they go with Nebu I think Henry is a standalone uh he's really really good everything about him is amazing and 5515 is the way to go for Henry if you can get lucky and get him there and again unlike Juga Liang, but very similar to Nebu this third skill does literally nothing in the open field so by skipping this you're not losing out on anything so hopefully you can get lucky with your skill ups and you will be fine the question is though should you expertise Henry and I think you know if you are an archer main I think the expertise on Henry might actually be worth it I think that this expertise alone even though the third skill literally doesn't do anything this expertise is quite good okay for 70 percent of your turns basically you're gonna get 30 percent more normal attack damage which is really good and then for the final 30 percent of your turns you're gonna take 20 percent less normal attack damage so either way no matter how you cut it you're getting a really powerful bonus every single turn and with that being said i think that the expertise for Duke Leong makes a lot more sense than the expertise for henry i think the priority to expertise henry is very low down your list i think there's way more things you should be working on there's way better commanders that you should be thinking about or maybe saving for new commanders for example but if you have you know a really solid three four maybe even five army lineup then you might be looking at henry for your next kbk and saying okay well i've got some sculptures lying around it's not enough for another full commander but it can really move the needle for my henry march then maybe you want to consider actually getting that expertise but even if you don't even if you just leave him at five five one five you're still getting an insane single target damage skill damage taken reduction a ton of stats here and some march speed everything about Henry is very very good and like I said before with Boudicca Prime's expertise this 10 percent Archer damage if there is smite damage commanders coming down the pipeline for Archers this could be really really good for him and also is another reason why the expertise here could be insane right 30 percent more normal attack damage would be equivalent to 30 percent more smite damage if there are smite damage commanders coming the only downside here is that once your rage meter you know maxes out then you cast your skill and you lose this right because you're going to have the 20 less 20 less normal attack damage we'll have to test that to see how that actually works if we ever need to 
you know cross that bridge in the future but just a couple things to keep in mind with Henry and if you only ever leave him at 5515 I think he's fine and lastly this is just an honorable mention um I don't really think most players should be investing in Artemisia these days I think she's a little bit old for my liking but if you are one of the players that are running her with Boudicca Prime then first of all you need to expertise Boudicca Prime but you do not need to expertise Artemisia 5515 is going to be insane for her okay third skill doesn't do anything in the open field it's only for garrisons but the fourth skill gives you 50 percent bonus damage for five seconds which is insane especially considering Boudicca Prime can remove her self silence and then you just get 50 percent bonus damage for free so again honorable mention here you probably shouldn't be getting Artemisia and if you are 5511 is actually probably even better because you you don't have to like risk your sculptures going into this skill that does nothing but for the small niche players that focus all in on archers 5515 you might want to consider next let's move on to cavalry and let's talk about Joan of Arc Prime now a lot of players myself included and even in my previous video where I talked about this 5115 is a really good place to stop or Joan of Arc Prime she's amazing there some insane value the problem is it's so hard to get that configuration uh and like I said earlier skill resets this is the commander that you should be saving them for it's if you're going to get any value at all out of skill resets you might as well use them on Joan of Arc Prime because it's the hardest configuration to get but it can get you the highest amount of value and save you the most amount of sculptures if you can actually do it now with that being said I know a lot of players are not going to be able to get that okay they're just not the luck it, it requires so much luck to get that configuration so for those of you that couldn't get it or for those of you that just want maybe a little bit more out of your Joan of Arc then a 5515 is a really good configuration for her because it gets you that extra cavalry attack okay you go from 5 to 20 percent you get some bonus March speed here as well and some extra normal attack damage and what are you missing out on you're missing out on four percent cavalry damage okay and you're missing out on 20 percent of normal attack damage bonus for one turn that can only trigger once every five seconds so guys this this really doesn't move the needle it's a one turn buff and again you're still going to get something here you're still getting the 10 percent but really it just doesn't move the needle guys it doesn't move the needle now again if we get a smite damage cavalry commander in the future then you might want to consider doing this right because the five percent cavalry damage is basically normal attack damage now let me just pause here and say that smite damage is still new at the time of recording this and it might be the case that you know while the five percent cavalry damage and even when we were talking about archers earlier when we talk about ten percent archer damage right in the game that is effectively boosting only the normal attacks right the normal encounter attacks but it could be the case that smite damage literally only goes off of the buffs that specifically say normal attack damage right so in other words both of these numbers they're effectively modifying the same thing but they're labeled differently right so it could be the case that smite damage only goes off of the normal attack damage label which would be annoying and super dumb but that could be the case so again I just want to say that this is all speculation because we don't really know we don't really have that information right now but regardless the point of this video is five 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 one commanders or equivalent for 380 sculptures five five one five Joan is fine you're missing out on her expertise what's this doing five percent counterattack damage not that much and then when you have more than 30 percent of the units remaining you get five percent more damage again it's okay but remember 310 legendary commander sculptures is a really it's a lot of sculptures guys it's a lot so yeah I I really don't think that that's that's super worth it so if you can avoid it it's it's probably better to save those sculptures and use them somewhere else next let's talk about William and William is one of the sort of OG 5551 commanders and he still remains relevant to this day and super powerful at 5551 I think there is no reason to expertise William I did it because I'm insane really all that this does is it bumps up the defense from 10 percent to 20 percent so you get twice the amount of defense for when you, you your AoE hits multiple targets that's not a game changer okay and then here you get 10 percent more attack and a little bit extra bonus damage to surrounded targets it's is it good it's fine but again guys we're talking about a conditional 10 percent defense bonus and a flat 10 percent attack bonus it's 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 not bad guys it's not bad but remember 310 sculptures for that is not it's not going to move the needle it's not going to move the needle and you can almost get another entire commander to 5551 for that much investment 
it just it's fine it's fine and really on the fourth skill the best part about the fourth skill is 50 rage per second for three seconds and you're gonna get that just by unlocking the skill right so there's really no reason to continue adding skills to this it doesn't make sense next let's talk about huo and he is a commander that again i think five five one five is great i think that is totally fine really good stuff here now similar to Jugu Liang, i think the third skill is also okay it does work in the open fields in fact it pretty much only works in the open field but it's also so conditional that a lot of times you're not going to get that much value out of it and also the really good part about this skill typically falls off and then you're just getting a normal attack damage bonus which again down the line if we do get a smite damage cavalry commander you might be okay with that or at least more okay with it than we are right now but at 5515 you're getting a massive single target damage factor with march speed reduction you're getting a ton of attack and additional march speed and you're still getting i think 30 percent of defense and 20 percent skill damage on the fourth skill here you're missing out on the auto wind effect which is a bummer okay and i think that similar to henry um, you may consider eventually coming back and expertising Huo. I, I think that would be fine, right? Like I said, all of the skills do work in the open field. So like you can do that. And I've done that myself, right? I think the expertise for me made sense, but for most players, five, five, one, five, you're going to get really good value out of this. And you're going to get even more stats than if it was just five, five, one, one. And again, if some of the skills fall in the third skill, that's okay. That's fine as well. And if you're wondering why his expertise priority is low, it's because we have commanders like Nevsky, okay, who is also the next and final cavalry commander we're going to talk about in this video. Nevsky at 5515 or 5551, whichever you prefer, is insanely good, but you do eventually want to expertise him, okay? You don't want to leave it there. You do want to perfect your Nevsky. You do want to get all the value out of him because every skill point is is really good for Nevsky, okay? So again, that's that's why for Huo, every skill point, you know, near the end there, it's like, eh, it's okay. For Nevsky, all the skill points work. The expertise is great, okay? So you definitely want to do it eventually, and then later, maybe you do the Huo, okay? Now, with Nevsky, um, there's some debate as to whether you should skip the third or the fourth skill. I think that, you know, players who go all in on the third skill want to just get the most amount of stats possible for their calves, which makes a lot of sense, okay? A lot of times you will be surrounding targets, so getting that bonus damage from two to 10 is really good. We love that. I think that I prefer the fourth skill possibly on Nevsky and the reason for this is because again and I think I mentioned this in a previous video but having the third skill at one you still get half the value of the defense right you're still getting 10 percent just by unlocking it which is great and the fourth skill gives you bonus skill damage okay uh, and this is going to scale really good with whoever your secondary is behind Nevsky whether it's William whether it's Joan of Arc Prime no matter who it is pretty much uh this bonus skill damage is insanely good and in you know in rise of kingdoms there's lots of ways that you can get bonus cavalry defense okay you can get a 10 percent defense item you could literally just use that item you could also get defense from a rune that drops you can also get extra defense from you know using transmutation stones on your uh, armaments right there's a lot of ways to get more cab defense there's n really no good ways to get bonus skill damage right so that's why to me i value the fourth skill more but again you can't guarantee this anyway so you're going to get the first two skills to five you'll unlock the last two then you'll continue adding skills into it and you know if you get a five five three three that's amazing it's fine it doesn't matter all these both these skills are great and eventually you will expertise him so that's fine and last but not least let's talk about infantry okay and the first commander we're going to talk about is Guan Yu of course okay Guan Yu unfortunately does not have a five 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 one configuration but he does have a configuration for 380 sculptures and that is five one five five okay now you could also make the argument that you would do a 5115 just like Joan. You could try that. It's fine. I think that because Guan is so old now, you kind of do want to squeeze the all that you can out of this third skill. I think the march speed really makes a difference here because infantry are so slow. Okay, so I really like getting this third skill to 5 instead of just a 5 one one five for example but the reason for this configuration is that the second skill doesn't do anything in the open field it's only for rallies so you literally don't need any points in this at all you will never rally with Guan Yu so a five one five five is literally done like you're done there's no reason to expertise Guan Yu there's a tiny amount of skill damage bonus you get from shields which is a thing and then March speed when you leave a structure but like 
310 legendary commando sculptures for just this is not worth it guys it really isn't in fact the 5155 configuration for Guan Yu used to be so good that I would say this is where you use all of your skill resets until Joan of Arc Prime came into the game I think she is a more valuable use for your skill resets but let's say you're committed to expertise in Joan of Arc Prime and you don't care that there's not as much value near the tail end of that then you could use all your skill resets in Guan Yu right or if you get really lucky with your Joan of Arc Prime and you get her to 5115 just by sheer luck then amazing all your skill resets you can use on Guan try to skip the second skill as much as possible next let's talk about Sargon okay Sargon is a really interesting use case and we actually brought this up in the 5511 video but 5550 is an amazing Sargon that you can leave as secondary okay you get a lot of value out of this combination you really want the March speed here on the third skill I know that I talked about this in the 5511 video or the 5510 in Sargon's case right um, I talked about how you do miss out on that and I think eventually you should get the 5550 especially if you're going to be pairing Sargon with Liu Che who is the newest latest and greatest uh, infantry commander in the game now the reason we don't unlock this last skill is because having an one it means you're only going to be dealing a 500 damage factor and the cost of that is the 10 stacks of your odd effect okay which is just not worth it and if you leave this at zero then somebody else's sargon can remove your odd stocks and hopefully their sargon is expertise right and then they'll get the 1000 damage factor out of it as opposed to the 500 that you would have been getting so literally it's just a win-win for everybody to just not unlock this skill at all and leave him at 5550 which means he will have to be a secondary because you won't be able to bring him to max uh, level now some of you may be wondering like okay well if you're going to use him with Liu Che, who is you know definitely one of the best pairings right now for Liu Che, then you would have to do Liu Che primary and a lot of players at first were saying that that's not great because the attack tree isn't really that good but some test results are showing that you actually could probably run Luce primary and it would be just as good if not better than the Sargon primary so um there really actually might not be a reason to ever unlock that last skill for Sargon I think running the Luce primary might actually be okay I think we need more testing to see you know what the value is there but if you were considering unlocking this last skill for Luce I would say hold off try the Luce primary if you think that Sargon primary will make a big difference then you can go ahead and 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 you know unlock this last skill and maybe even expertise them at that point but um right now at the time of recording this I don't really think there's a, a reason to even unlock this last skill and if you do if you did make that mistake then I would say try to bring it to three okay five 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 three I know that that kind of breaks the rule of this video but at the 700 damage factor mark I do think that it becomes viable and worth it to unlock the Sargon plus you're getting a little bit extra defense you're also getting a little bit of a better shield right so yeah 5553 is good but I don't really think you need the expertise Sargon I mean I don't know maybe you do maybe the expertise is good I would say he's not the worst commander in the, in the world to expertise I expertised him pretty much right away okay I think he's similar to Huo where like his expertise is good it's fine the last skill is good it's fine the priority for expertise is a lot lower than other commanders right for example CPO Prime I think CPO Prime is another commander that we're going to talk about in this video for 5551 but eventually you want to expertise him and the priority for expertise in CPO is pretty high I think his expertise is very good all of his skills are great in the open field and that's not really as much the case for Sargon like if you were going to decide which of these two do I expertise first it's always CPO it's always CPO no question now just like with Nevsky uh, we have to decide you know is the third or fourth skill better here for CPO and again just by unlocking the third skill you get infantry attack and it doubles over the course of you leveling it up um, I think skill damage taken reduction is probably a little bit more valuable because you just can't get this from anywhere else right whereas health you can get again from armaments from runes that drop things like that it's up to you this safe investment is 5551 obviously but you really can unlock these last two skills and wherever the skills land it's fine you don't need to use a skill reset on cpo if you get a 5515 amazing 5551 amazing 5533 amazing it's fine it doesn't matter both these skills are good 380 commander sculptures and you have a super powerful cpo now again eventually you want to expertise him the final points in both these skills are going to make a nice little difference and also you get 10 percent more skill damage and more rage when silenced which there's still guan yu's running around there's still silence running around so faster rage regen is always good next we're going to talk about luce and this is again one of the latest greatest commanders in the game and one of the best things that is making waves for infantry right now which is amazing I think 
5515 is amazing for Luje, but he also, you know, it doesn't matter if you land points in the third skill instead of the fourth one, that's fine. All these skills are super good in the open fields. There's nothing here that's, you know, dependent on rallies or garrisons or anything like that, right? So again, if you go to 5533, five, three, amazing, 5515, five, five, amazing, 5551, five, amazing. All those configurations are good. I think personally, the value of the fourth skill is probably a little bit better than the value of the third skill. I do realize that there's quite a big attack bump from one to five here. And I could be wrong about this, but normal attack damage bonus for Luce is really good. It's better on him than any other commander in the game, basically, except for maybe Gorgo. And this 10% bonus is basically an increased 10% damage on his active skill, which is super powerful. So I think it makes a lot of sense to go all in on this fourth skill if you can. And also whenever you do your active skill for Luce or you proc the damage on the third skill, the target is going to deal 10% less damage, which is a really powerful debuff. Okay. That applies to all their damage, skill damage, anything, which is really, really good. Whereas here again, it's flat scaling attack and the smite damage factor doesn't really go up that much. So just unlocking this, I think is fine. Eventually though, you definitely want to expertise Luce. You definitely do. Okay. The expertise here is really good. A 25% chance to basically deal double damage for a turn and also proc more of the damage on Sargon's active skill. Really good expertise out of Luce. Okay. So definitely come back and expertise him. His priority for expertise is definitely above Sargon. For example, uh, very, very good. And the final commander I want to talk about here is kind of an honorable mention and that is Trajan. Okay. Um, I think back in the day, players said that Trajan was an expertise or nothing. I think that's kind of how players thought about Trajan. I think the narrative has changed a little bit. And especially in my mind, um, I have a 5551 Trajan. And the reason here is because this last skill is look, it's good. Okay. It is good. You get to stack an insane amount of defense. Okay. You can stack up to 60%. That's wild. Okay. Especially um, back in the day, players used to pair him with uh, Harold to kind of offset the defense reduction from Harold. Nobody's doing that anymore. Okay. I don't really see Trajan Harold ever. I see Trajan used with a bunch of different things, CPO prime, for example, but I don't really see him with Harold that often. And I would probably never run him with Harold either and you don't really need this defense okay because if you're fighting in the open field and they're targeting your trajan they're already making a, a mistake like you should never be targeting trajan it makes no sense to target trajan if you're targeting their trajan that means their other three or four marches are pounding you at max health with all of their skill damage like you are getting shredded okay and this is something that we've noticed a lot in our kingdom a lot of our players use Trajan and a lot of people target them and it never goes well for them. It is a huge mistake. I've talked about this in previous videos. If you see Trajan in the open field, literally ignore him. Like literally don't do it. Just leave him there. Because here's the thing. If you target their high damage marches first and then their Trajan is left, who is their Trajan buffing? Not much, right? Not much. Okay. So with that being said, um, you don't really need the defense here, right? Because if they're ignoring your Trajan, then great. You don't need the defense. And if they're targeting your Trajan, that is a bummer, but the rest of your armies are going to pound them anyway, right? So I personally don't think an expertise Trajan is needed anymore. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think especially like over time, I think the value of Trajan, it's actually been surprisingly high considering how old, how old Trajan is. He's been around for a really long time and he's still pretty prominent and popular in the open field. But I think as we get more commanders like Luce, like players are going to start to consider like, do we just take out the Trajan for another insanely high power DPS March? Right. I think the answer to that right now at the time of recording, this is probably not if you're running seven marchers, but like how many more, how many more commanders are going to come into the game with a plus two K damage factor before we say, okay, it's better to just run 14 commanders with you know all five target aoe 2000 plus you know what i mean like eventually the value of trajan is going to be power crept out and i think that we don't really need the expertise for him but if you want to eventually expertise him that's fine i think you do get more value here but a 5551 i think is is totally fine it's totally fine these days especially if you really mainly use him for canyon which don't invest in the commander for canyon right but if you do like 
it's fine and i just threw trajan in here at the end of the uh infantry portion because i think most players use him basically as a pseudo infantry commander that's how i'm running mine and that's pretty much it guys that is going to do it for this video hopefully you guys found this useful or informative and if you did i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on this video are there some things that you agree with or disagree with are there commanders that i missed here let me know in the comments section below and while you're down there make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this is john new york i will talk to you guys again soon Peace.